Now let's consider a claim which is known as the dark matter hypothesis. The dark matter hypothesis is asking us to revisit the question, what is actually the true net asset position of a country, or what are actually the true net export earnings or net investment earnings of a nation? This is all said in the context of discussing the current account, and if need be, go to our video on balance of payments to refresh your knowledge there. But these are the major components of the current account, and the dark matter hypothesis is asking whether we are measuring them correctly, or whether there might not actually be some hidden assets that some countries hold. By the way, it's called the dark matter hypothesis as a kind of joke. In cosmology, there's something called the dark matter hypothesis, which refers to the fact that perhaps a lot of the matter in the universe is in some sense invisible or missing, and we can't see it. So that's applying the same general concept to our measurements of the current account. Perhaps some of the most important things which are going on are also somehow invisible to us or missing. A big part of the context here has to do with large U.S. trade deficits. So, for instance, in the year 2006, the U.S. trade deficit was measured at $792 billion. Of course, that's a lot of money. At the time, many economists believed this would be a significant problem looking forward. But the people who cited the dark matter hypothesis said that the net asset position and the net export performance of the United States were actually a lot more favorable than this number taken alone might have indicated. Could it be that American companies are actually exporting more than we measure? Well, consider one U.S. multinational, McDonald's, selling Big Macs in Germany. There's an implicit export here. You can think of it as the brand name. It's being transferred within the firm, within McDonald's, and that brand name, once used in Germany, certifies the value of the hamburger. Or you can think of the U.S. firm as having knowledge as to how to make or how to retail hamburgers. Again, that knowledge is transferred within the firm. It doesn't count as an export in our statistical categories, but it means that overall the net asset position of the United States and American companies is stronger than we are measuring. It is often suggested that perhaps U.S. multinational firms have better managers or better managerial technology, or they use information technology better, and this again will mean that the true net asset positions of those companies are stronger than mere numbers on exports in a given year will indicate. So think of a classic U.S. investment abroad as being a branch of McDonald's selling hamburgers in Germany, while a classic investment of foreigners in the United States is that foreigners may be holding T-bills. On average, McDonald's is making more money in Germany and in other countries than foreigners are earning holding our T-bills. If you adjust for this differential and think about what that means for the net asset position of the United States, well, that's another way of thinking about the meaning of dark matter. In simple numerical form, U.S. investments abroad are often earning more than 5% on average, and foreign investments in the United States are often earning less than 5% on average. One way we could think about that discrepancy is simply to say we're going to discount the value of all of these assets, say at 5% looking forward, and then figure out what's the difference in value between what Americans are investing in broad and what foreigners are investing in the United States, and there's some back-of-the-envelope calculations where that difference in value actually turns out to run in the trillions of dollars. And this, again, has to be put in the context of evaluating the meaning of the U.S. trade deficit. If the U.S. is running a trade deficit of so many billions of dollars, but our net asset position abroad is actually stronger by trillions of dollars, but that's dark matter, well, then you're likely not to be so worried about that U.S. trade deficit. There are, in addition, some other ways of thinking about dark matter. One claim is the United States is supplying the world with a reserve currency, which it somehow protects the value of, and you therefore can think of the U.S. when it's sending dollars abroad. That's a kind of export of sorts. It's an export of liquidity. So it looks like we are importing more than we're exporting, but at the same time we're importing by paying with dollars, we're also exporting these liquidity services abroad. You can think also of the United States as in some ways exporting its legal order or exporting the security of the United States. 
So if you're investing in some foreign country, you might be afraid of broken promises or unfair treatment from the legal system. But at least plausibly, investing in the United States gives you a better deal. And you can think of that deal as being a kind of implicit export of American legal order and security. Though, again, it's not measured as an export. It would count as a form of dark matter. Overall, I would take the dark matter hypothesis seriously, though I think it's a perfectly fair criticism to point out we really don't know how large this dark matter ought to be, and once you start adjusting for dark matter, there's a lot of other adjustments you might want to make, and we're not sure where this process would end. But I would still stress a more general point. If you're considering the size of the U.S. trade deficit, the correct thing to compare it to is not other flows in that year, but rather the overall wealth and resources and capabilities of the United States. And viewed in that framework, well, again, that might lead you to see that trade deficit as less of a problem overall. To read more on the dark matter hypothesis, of course, you can just use Google. I also recommend the Hausman and Sturzenegger piece on dark matter. And for related concepts, for background, see our video on the balance of payments and also our video on trade imbalances.